Welcome to the Home Business Podcast with Richard Captain Henderson, publisher of Home Business Magazine, and Sherilyn Colleen, managing editor. This how-to show helps you successfully operate your home-based business. Greetings and welcome to the Home Business Podcast. I'm Richard Captain Henderson, your skipper at Home Business TV. And I'm Sherilyn Colleen, your co-host. Let's secure for C and get it away. So much of the focus in a home-based business is getting started up getting the business launched. But what about after the business is launched, is on a stable foundation and showing signs of success? An entrepreneur needs to change up his or her focus. In this post-startup phase, it's time to put that focus into increasing our revenue to develop additional revenue streams for our business. We also need a new entrepreneur's mindset, one that takes our creativity to the next level of business growth. Helping us to chart these difficult shoal waters is business development expert, Dr. David Kubes, a lawyer, entrepreneur, consultant, coach, and certified trainer. Did I miss any skills? <laughs> so greetings, Dr. David Kubes. Welcome to the Home Business Podcast. Say hello to our audience. Hello, everyone. I'm very honored to be here with you tonight. Thank you for having me as your guest today. Yeah, thanks for coming on our show. So again, and, uh, emphasizing our international flair of home-based business, where are, you, where are you calling in from? I'm calling it from Dublin, from Ireland. Oh, it must be beautiful. Wow. It's a bit cold these days, but it's nice. <laughs> it's 7 p.m. and it's still daylight. <laughs> I like that. Still green? <laughs> yes. It's always green, right? Yeah. It's always green here, yeah. <clears throat> so, Dr. David Kubes, let's jump right into the deep end of the pool to the key issue of business revenue. What are key considerations for a home business owner when they strive to increase revenue? Well, what the benefit of home business owners is that they actually have no limitations. They can actually turn everything that's fun for them, for them into a business dream. And my suggestion for people who are running home business is um, whatever is the easiest thing that you do in your life can make you the biggest revenue stream. There are so many things that are easy for you that you just do without even noticing that are a burden for others. And this is where especially home-based businesses can increase the revenue streams. But not looking into what makes me money, look into what's really easy for me, what's easy for me and what's fun for me, and then look into how could I turn that into a revenue stream. This is how I actually uh, got a lot of subcontractors for my, for, for my business, for my company. There are things in my life that I really don't enjoy doing. They are such a burden for me, like watering my plants, walking the dog, um, right, running my social media or other stuff. I know, I got to know people, they didn't even notice that it's work. They didn't, had no clue that they could turn that into a business. And this is where then they got their own uh, specialists because they don't do it from, I need to work. They do it from the energy, it's fun and it's easy. And this is, from my point of view, what your business should be. It should be fun. It should be easy. Work doesn't have to be hard to be a success. It so be, yeah, a, couple key, a couple key points there. You're saying like a home-based business is, is smaller. It's like a ship, a smaller craft that's easier to turn by a bigger business that might be like a big tanker. And that, that takes a long time to turn somewhere. So you can capitalize on things more quickly, but start by focusing on what you would find to be fun and then look for those fits and how you can develop that into a revenue stream. But, but, but keep that consideration of fun. It's the fun and it's the enthusiasm. It's about, wow, I'm excited about doing that. It's the excitement that gets you out there. And it's the excitement that should be actually the thing that guides your business. Um, I personally don't like business plans. They're good to get a first idea. But as long as you are willing to change them whenever required, it's good. <laughs> this is actually a, a good comparison with a small business. A small home-based business is so flexible that you can adjust it uh, to whatever is fun for you, whatever is required at the moment, uh, really easily. So um, having a plan and sticking to a plan is actually not really a contribution. It's the flexibility that's actually uh, the benefit of a home-based business. Yeah, I like that. It brings you back to the saying we had about a plan in the military it was only good till the first shot fired <laughs> yes. and then you better be ready to turn on a dime but you know another key emphasis after business startup you know is to diversify those business revenue how can you add additional revenue streams to the business you know after you have you know evaluated things found the things that were fun 
Um, you know, how do you then kind of move into adding these revenue streams into your business? So what I, what, what I always do and still do in my business, I educate myself on whatever I want to focus on, on ever where I, where I want to do business. If I want to expand the business, I want to explore a new country. If I want to sell a new product, if I want to travel more or bring my business international, it's education, educate yourself, inform yourself and never come to a certain conclusion. I love, and this is one of the tools I'm using for every uh, business strategy I'm planning. I'm asking a question, what else is possible here? Um, by coming to conclusion, a conclusion always is like a dead end, a one way road and nothing else can show up. So having a focusing on a certain matter or coming to a conclusion always includes possibilities or business opportunities and revenue streams that you haven't really considered yet. So by being open to new businesses and not having a plan or a certain focus on where you want to go actually helps you finding more revenue streams because you are more aware of things that you haven't considered. Your mind um, is quite focused all the time, but there is way more. There's your intuition, there's your awareness. And if you allow your awareness and your intuition to contribute to your business, you will find out that there are so many things out there that you haven't thought of yet. So and kind of what I, what I see you're saying here possibly is that when you look to develop these additional revenue streams, don't get tunnel vision into them and welded to them because that, that might shut off your intuition and block you from finding other things um, that might be more effective ways to generate additional revenue, but to stay flexible. Yes, correctly. You might not see it. Probably it's in front of you and the business opportunity is there. Uh, you just don't see it. And That's also, funny. it's always right in front of you. <laughs> you don't <laughs> see best it. opportunities. They just walk right by and you never see them. Uh. And I also would not exclude doing business with other people, getting a business partner in. There are so many people that had a bad experience with a business partner and then they say, okay, I will never ever do business partners again. Um, just because uh, it didn't work out one time in the past doesn't mean that this is a mindset for forever. You can do it different. So what I always suggest is just when something went wrong or didn't work out, don't stop. Just do it slightly different in the future, but never give up. Always keep on trying and always keep on trying in a different way. And then it's actually, again, fun for you because you explore different fields, you explore new methods, you educate yourself, you get in touch with other people. So it's, it's way more exciting than sticking to what was and sticking to what didn't work out. It's more, for me, it's, it's, it's the ultimate frustration of <laughs> being oh, captured yeah. rather now, than rather a lot, finding a business partner, somebody to help diversify risk, help, you know, provide strengths that you don't have is a, is a great way for, uh, a home business to, to grow and expand. But before moving on to our next topic, I'd like to highlight this show sponsor, Little Jimmy's Italian Ices and Push Carts. Start up a business selling their delicious and healthy Italian Ices. Easy transport carts fits into most vans or SUVs. No experience required. Rated A-plus by the Better Business Bureau. For more information, call 800-763-4348 or visit italianice.net or our podcast website for more information on sponsors. So when looking to create additional revenue streams, it's important to think outside of the box uh, to not be welded into your current business model. Can you touch on that? Um, yeah, I mean, what, what is actually a business model? A business model is a mindset that you had in mind that you have determined this is how my business will work. Um, if you stick to that business model, you are actually excluding uh, possibilities you're excluding uh, revenue streams that don't fit this particular model and when it comes to home business and flexibility I would not exclude anything so a business model as I said at the beginning is good as long as you're willing to change it when it's required so having a business model gives you kind of a security when you start but the willingness to change it to adopt it um, and sometimes it's required just to totally change it um, it's not a failure to change a business model. A lot of people say, no, this is the plan. We stick to the plan. Not a really smart choice because it's not fun anymore. And why would you keep something in place that doesn't really work? So we're getting like, back to that same point. If you got to be flexible and willing to turn that ship quickly. Yes. 
And this is again the benefit of a, of a, of a home business. You can do that with ease. It doesn't cost you a lot of money. Um, you don't have to train employees or get approval from supervisory boards. You can do that in a heartbeat. And this is actually where you get a way better advantage on the international market. You can easily and faster adopt to the demand of your future clients and existing clients. So a lot of home businesses have this advantage. They are flexible, they can adopt, they don't need approvals. So this is why I think it, it, it's way more than a niche market. It's actually the future. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I like what you're saying there because we're always been in this for a while, you know, defending home business, is it real? You know, how does it stack up? Mm -hmm. But when you take a look at it from this perspective and where the economy is going, you actually have a competitive advantage. You're to the, you know, to an office-based larger corporation to capitalize on opportunities that are out there, particularly worldwide. It, it is, and it, ha it, requires, it requires to get over the judgment that if you don't have an office, you don't run a real business. Uh, this is actually something, we are not in the 80s anymore. <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have iPhones, I'm in a hotel room in Dublin, I'm here for business now and I'm doing this. My, my laptop is my office, wherever I am is my office. And it took me two years to train my clients to get because they always ask me, so are you in your office? Are you in your office? You and are. I try to uh, just if I know I'm on this business trip, that business trip. And then I said, no, I'm always in my office. And I, since then I said, yeah, my office is where I am. Any problem with that? And they stopped it. But We're all then, mobile entrepreneurs. Hey, but, but generating additional income is more than just building revenue streams. You know, it also requires a mindset. David, what mindset uh, can you choose to create more revenue? Well, the mindset that totally works for me is being in question. A mindset has a certain um, uh, uh, structure. I love being in question all the time, not coming to a conclusion. Whatever shows up, having an, a certain idea of what I want to do, but always being questioned. Is that still appropriate? Is that still working? Does it feel light? Is it still fun? Is it exciting? Does, is any re change required? So instead of having a, a fixed mindset, also adding flexibility to the mindset and allow that to change. And always be, be in question with yourself all the time. Um, the amazing thing about asking a question, it, what, what a question um, changes in your mindset, it, is, it opens it up and it allows new ideas to come in. Um, and this is always a great contribution to your business because it keeps you in creation mode. When you always ask a question, what else is possible? What else could I create? Is there any new field that I could explore? If you live this question and if you are being this question all the time, when you develop your business or new ideas, you allow more ideas to show up in your universe because your attention is way broader than when you're focused on something. So big picture, building big. upon that flexibility is start asking more questions and that'll help build that mindset. Exactly, especially when you wanna go international as well, don't buy into the problem of languages. There are always ways around it. If you wanna to go to a different culture, if you dream about traveling, just started and started with the question, what would it take to reach this goal with ease? What would it take to, to get to know someone who can help me? So this is what I use in my business. Try to, I, I always try to, form, to use a question if I want to reach a new goal, rather than coming to the conclusion how I will do it. This limits everything. But reaching a goal by asking questions is way more fun and it gives you, it opens new horizons. It's a brilliant tool. I'm using that for years now, and my life has, been, has become way, way easier and more successful since I'm doing that. Great. Another key issue in a business is its brand. Is branding a requirement in your mindset for increasing your revenue? Um, brand, I, I like the idea of branding at the beginning of a business. Um, and also branding is like uh, um, a mindset. As long as your brand is flexible, as long as your brand allows you to add additional revenue streams and to change uh, the, 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 the focus or the main core of your business, it's a, great, it's a great thing to have. It gives you a certain identity, 
but I also would not use the brand as something that cannot be changed. Um, so when I look at branding, I would actually say that me, myself, I am the branding. The way I walk, the way I talk, the way I dress, the way I facilitate, the way I talk to the clients. It's more the being of me, the uniqueness of everyone. Every individual on this planet is, is unique. N nobody is, is exactly alike. And I think this should be the branding of every business. What can you, what makes your business unique? It's not the logo or the letterhead or, 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 what, or the sign on the door uh, or the, the website. Of course you need a website. But I would actually make myself the branding rather than my website. So, uh, so when I see a problem here, branding is, is important to get that brand for your business. But what you're saying here is that a brand is important, but be careful that it doesn't box you into something and get, and get back to that same theme here I'm, I'm hearing over and over again, which is flexibility, that a brand could, if used the wrong way, could decrease your flexibility. Correct. And if, you're, if the uniqueness of yourself is your brand, if you are the one, and even if, if it's the crazy one that gets all this shit done and nobody knows how, this can be a brand. <laughs> so it can be the way people Chaos. talk about you. It's the it's the mouth to mouth marketing. Uh, this is where I see the future. Facebook, Twitter, all these social media is can help you, but the uniqueness of yourself, your identity. That's yourself. And if you include that in your brand or pay attention to, to the uniqueness that you can offer to your clients, then you really have a brand uh, that has a value because it's you. It's the value of yourself. So keep that brand focused on you and be flexible. Well, David, let's end by you know, shifting to the big picture now, something to tie it all together. What do you consider to be the ultimate key to success? The ultimate key to success is excitement. As long as you do, as long as you wake up in the morning, being so excited to start your day, you are a success. And this is the energy that you are being. This is the energy that people get that interact with you, even if it's personally or online. If you have this excitement, if you're doing what you really enjoy, you automatically attract new clients. People are way more aware as they think they are they get attracted by people who are happy and who are excited and they want that too. So being excited, doing what's fun for you and having ease with what you're doing, this is what everybody on this planet desires. If you're being that, you will automatically get more clients and more revenue streams. So the ultimate key to success is excitement about what you're doing. I like your points, fun and excitement. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. David Kubez, this has been a great discussion on unlocking the keys to increase revenue and business success. Do you have any final points you would like to share with our audience? Well, yes. Uh, all this has, uh, I, I learned all this when I did some research to find more, uh, to get more ease and to expand my business. Uh, what I am using in my business and what I'm using now as a facilitator are the tools of access consciousness. Access consciousness is a life coaching method. Uh, that has way more tools on business, on relationship, on body issues um, that you can use in everyday life. So the business part that I'm practicing now is just a small part of that. And these tools make your daily life way easier. And you can apply them everywhere, uh, not only in business, and you will see uh, these tools will magically change your life, business and private. Well, we'll put some information on access consciousness up on the uh, podcast web post for your podcast. Well, Dave, Dr. David Kubis, thanks for being such a great guest on the Home Business Podcast. Thank you. To learn more about Dr. David Kubis, visit accessconsciousness.com or our podcast website for more information on guests. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Home Business Podcast. Share your feedback with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at our website, homebusinessmag.com. Visit the website for information on advertising. Subscribe free to our newsletter. Please visit our sponsors. For more information, visit homebusinessmag.com or the Home Business Expo at homebusinessexpo.com. I'm Richard Captain Henderson saying anchors away. And I'm Sherilyn Colleen. We'll talk with you soon. Until then, make it a great home-based biz day.